several areas. The agreed contribution uh, uh, to Ghana's GDP has reduced to about 1.3%. And the General Agricultural Workers Union and some experts believe lack of attention to the sector is leading Ghana to uh, contracting the Dutch disease, i.e. neglect of the agri ag sector. Agriculture has uh, been a central role playing and promoting growth and poverty reduction in the Ghanaian economy. The Peasant Farmers Association in Ghana has petitioned Parliament to allocate portions of the oil revenue to agriculture. But this question I am asking is, has the government done enough to support agriculture in Ghana, let alone talk about welfare of our farmers in the country? Uh, today, that's the topic on the table. My name is Nana Ansakwao and this is PM Express. When I come back, I, am, I will introduce my guest. Hello and welcome back and we're discussing oil for food. What a strange topic, isn't it? See, 80% of all the food that we consume come from peasant farmers. 80%, not much, come from peasant farmers. But as a nation, what have we done? How have we paid attention to the farmers or the sector? Making sure that they are also well and maybe produce even more so that we can export. And today, the issue on the table, Now I'll read this before I even introduce my guest. And this is a petition to the government of Ghana to invest oil revenue into the development of small uh, holder farming. We, the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana, want to encourage the government to prioritize support for smallholder farming in the next medium-term prioritization of the oil revenue allocation to ensure... Uh, improve seedlings, improve extension services, access to credit, access to market, and small-scale agro-processing. As empirical evidence and experience in research, rich country in research, uh, rich in resource, rich countries, including Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, where a substantial portion of their petroleum revenues were invested in agriculture, has shown that poverty levels reduce faster as a result of improved income levels of rural smallholder farmers. Again, research in our country has shown that at the national level, agricultural public expenditure have the highest return, agriculture to public expenditure have the highest return in terms of agricultural productivity. For instance, for every one marginal CD invested in agriculture, 16.8 is returned. This is against the marginal CD invested in feeder roads uh, with returns of 8.8 .8 CDs. And uh, that of health sector investment returns is only 1.3 CDs. And that's what they are saying. With me in the studio as the president of the Peasant Farmers Association, Mohammed Adam Nasiru. Mohammed, you're welcome. Thank you. Very good. Is Nasiru your first name or Mohammed your first name? Uh, Mohammed. Is the first name? Mohammed Adam Nasiru. Mohammed Adam Nasiru. Yeah. Mohammed. In August... Adam. Adam, yeah? yeah? Adam. Let me call you Adam. Sorry, Adam. In uh, August 2000... 28th August 2012, you asked for 5% of SADA funds to be channeled to peasant farmers to help you for the same cause. Did they mind you? Yeah, I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, my colleague, dedicated and tireless farmers of this country. Mm -hmm and uh, to members of the studio for this wonderful opportunity. 
uh, farmers to get in this uh, opportunity, I, will, I must say uh, it's a big credit to your station. Yeah, as you rightly mentioned, what the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana is doing is to advocate for some support in terms of policy and programs of government uh, for the agricultural sector. Uh, not only so that we have made a lot of petitions to government in terms of what we do to feed this nation, as you mentioned. Eighty percent of the food you eat in Ghana is from smallholder farmers. And uh, that is a very big area that governments needs to put a very serious attention with all the political willingness it deserves. Yes, um, SADA is yet to consider the 5% we have asked them to commit to uh, small-scale farmers. Uh, what SADA is doing, I don't think, is in support of small-scale farmers. SADA is looking at service providers. Uh, people who take their support and then also give it to the farmers. Uh, it doesn't come directly to the farmers. And so we s still even have an issue with SADA because we think that support should go directly to the farmers. But if you make your research, you would have seen that this support goes to big-time farmers who reside in the cities and not even in the rural communities. Mm -hmm. So we still have an issue with uh, SADA. But your, your petition this time is to get some parts of the oil revenue directly to the uh, peasant farmer to obviously help with improved seedlings, improve extension services. And Have you got a percentage in mind or you are throwing it to them to give you a percentage? Um, thank you. We are just throwing it to government to give us a percentage. Uh, as an agric nation, uh, we cannot afford uh, to see the loaf for other countries to feed us. Ghana is an agric nation because a chunk of the population uh, is involved in agricultural activities. And so looking at even programs we have designed for ourselves, we don't need to ask somebody to give us food. We need to prepare to get our own food. For instance, our school feeding program. We, have, we want to feed all our school children. Uh, besides, we have agreed uh, as, as, as a nation to commit 10% uh, of our budgetary resources to the agricultural sector. This is in view of the Mabutu, Mabutu Declaration. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all programs government is... Uh, uh, at the moment, I think they're doing about 14% of total revenue that's going into agricultural cent uh, center. And uh, as you rightly put, only 1.3% it's coming back. So to put in 14 and get 1.3 percent is uh, yeah. That tells you there is something something wrong somewhere, and that is why the peasant farmers have taken the lead in making it known uh, to government that the way we are doing our culture is not the way that can feed us. I remember personally the former president Kufo uh, did declare we are moving away from the cutlass and the hoe, mm -hmm. and the lead professor also made the same thing, but we are still at the same level. And that is even why our name is the peasant. We are still drawing everybody's attention to the fact that we are still doing agriculture the way we started even Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And so something needs to be done, proactive uh, measures needs to be put in place to make Ghana uh, feed itself by way of introducing technology and the needed support to the agricultural sector so that we can become self-sufficient in food production we can be food secured and even export food to our neighbors and elsewhere in the world. You see, with peasant farming, is technology not dangerous? Because technology then means that maybe you need to get rid of 50 farmers and then one technology does all their work for them. Is it not going to have the reverse? Yes, you get more food, but more people unemployed? No, that is, that is, that is not the, the issue. We are talking about smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. Here we are talking about building farmers' capacity with modern technologies to come out with yields that are very high and appreciable. We, are not, we, are, we, are, we don't want to see an issue where you cultivate one and you can get two, three bags of maize or rice or something of that sort. We want technology to improve, build the farmer capacity to come out with uh, 20, 30 bags of uh, rice or maize from one acre. This is the technology we are talking about. Okay. We are not talking about where they will equip commercial farmers to throw away the smallholder farmers. 
improvement in what we do daily. This is what we are looking for. You see, uh, time and time again, states and governments have always paid lip service. Oh, when we come to power and I Greek, and when we come to power I Greek, everybody said it till today. And now we found oil, and then everybody is scared because most countries, as soon as they find oil, the attention goes there and all other sectors go down. So it's a good cry that you're making the noise now for yeah. people to be aware that, listen, let's not forget about this yes, sector. Yes. But what, I mean, will this be enough or should something happen for states and government to realize that, no, it's true, we need to pay attention to this sector? Because, uh, like you say, Sada is still even considering, even though they sit down and eating 80% of the food you produce, they are still thinking. Yeah, I think this, what we are doing today started a very long time. We have come out with the Farmers Manifesto. The President, uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, uh, have copies of the manifesto, including his agri ministers, including Parliament, Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade and Parliamentary Select Committee on Agriculture. We meet them often. And so it's, it's, this is part of the process where we are pushing this issue to the fore of policy makers. And so we need everybody's support, including Joy FM and Multi TV, so that if we are able to succeed in doing so, that means Ghana is going to be food secured and uh, the rural uh, farmer will be income secured. Uh, Nasir, you see, at the moment as a state, we are putting 14% of state revenue towards agriculture. Yeah. Now. Out of this 14%, if we now go and bring more oil money, and let's say we, even if we give you 10% more, and it goes to let's say 28%, uh, you know, at 14%, you brought 1.3 back. So 28%, you're going to bring 2.6. Is it not reverse economy? You know, we might better off going to buy the food from somewhere. Yeah, I think, first of all, you have to look at the, your priority. Um, uh, this is a sovereign state mm. where people are, are supposed to be doing ABC to be part of the economic uh, building blocks. And so if you look at a chunk of people who are involved in the agricultural sector, like the farmers, you cannot afford to bring in food only for them to stay in the communities doing nothing or trooping to the cities for non-existing jobs like we are witnessing today you have to find them something doing because they are also part of the economy. And if you look at the, the farmers in Ghana, uh, they have been very good to everybody since Adam. They have been producing to feed this nation without any complaint. They are not crying for single spine. They are not crying for affordable housing. All what we are asking for is support and protection of the agricultural sector so that we can produce to feed this nation. And so I think government, if government is reasonable, uh, what we are crying for uh, will be taken in good faith without any hesitation. And I'm going to take a break now. When I take a break, I am just going to assume that tomorrow we grant uh, the farmers uh, their wish and give them a part of the oil money. At the moment, uh, one of the complaints we hear most is the buffer stock. We can't store enough and most people complain that I can't get my food from the uh, farm to the cities. So once all these things have gone up and the yields are doubled, aren't they going to cry more because there's going to be more food that's going to rot? We're coming straight back. Hello and uh, welcome back. And the topic is oil for food. Uh, peasants farmers in uh, Ghana are saying that the oil revenues, that the government should think about it and dedicate some of that money to this industry because after all, as they stand now, without any help or with as little help as they get, they are feeding or they are contributing 80% of whatever uh, food there is in the country. Now, uh, multi-TV viewers who have not been able to regain service after the upgrade should visit the following mobile service centers for assistance. Bacho Natoto, Kolebu, opposite International, uh, International Commercial Bank, then Suma Runabout, opposite the filling station, uh, Medina Zongo Junction, opposite GCB, La Paz, adjacent Western Union, uh, Rollins Park, Accra Central, Teshi Agbeleza, Manet Road, Ebenezer Junction, 
uh, Tema Community One, uh, Community Center Car Park. Uh, you can also contact Multi TV on 0302 211680. And the number again is uh, 0302 211680. And you can call them for assistance and they will help you reset. I am talking to Adam, uh, Mohammed Adam Nasiru, president of the uh, Peasant Farmers Association. And before we went on the break, I just said, or I just asked him that, you know, one of the complaints we get from farmers most is that uh, they are unable to bring the food from the market onto, uh, well, from the farm onto the market, and therefore it's rotten. If in any case you give them improved seedlings and everything and they get a big bumper harvest, the farmer is only going to get a big broken heart because when last year there was only one basket of tomato that got rotten, this time he's got 10 baskets rotting and he's still looking at them. How, what happens then? Uh, I think as, as a nation, uh, once you are giving the farmers uh, viable seeds to produce, your intention is to make more harvest, get bumper harvest. And so we should be thinking ahead when we are giving the seed to the farmers. That at the end of the day, we are going to look for storage facilities for this. Mm -hmm. And so this thing needs to be factored into our planning. It shouldn't take us by surprise. But this is what we are experiencing today. For instance, the buffer stock, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. the, so many times we asked them to come and buy our farm produce. They couldn't come because the reason was that they didn't have uh, enough uh, mm. facilities where they will keep the produce. Wow. And that is very true. Some of the areas where they are buying them, if you visit their, 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 their market points, they have kept the farm produce on pro cocoons some more than four or five years today under the scorching sun, waiting for human consumption. And so that is what I'm saying as a nation, all these things need to be part of our planning. And so if you are giving people good seed, definitely they will come out with bumper harvest. What next? Storage and market. These are the things we will be crying for when these things are done. Uh, apart from that, let's, let, let's, let's deal with the buffer. Yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Do they, do they only buy grain so far or they buy other things? They buy grain. Well, grain. As far as I know, they buy grain. But don't we consume enough kinky beer and gary to consume, you know... We are talking okay. about improved seed. When the bumper harvest is there, when we, we take what we eat, the leftovers, what happened? We need to store it at a place where we will need it one but don't day. Don't the breweries use it? The breweries? Uh, they use it. The intention of the buffer stock is not to uh, sell to the, to, to, to the breweries. It's just to keep. The intention is to keep it and release it to the market as and when it is needed, maybe okay. during the lean season. Okay. And so as I'm just uh, complaining to you, that as a nation we need to have enough storage facilities where we keep these things. But today as we are now for a buffer stock is buying, they don't know where to keep. They are not even buying. And as we are talking about the buffer stock, only a small number of the farmers are aware of the existence of the buffer stock. Now, and even that, the yes, buffer stock is full up. It's full up. They, they don't have the, the capacity to, to, to mop up the, all the excess food from the farmers. So it becomes a problem. We have other agencies buying, but their buying is limited. For instance, World Food and other companies are into buying of the foodstuffs. Um, what is happening today is that the cry we are uh, crying to everybody today, including yourself, because even if you are not a pizza farmer, you are a pizza eater. You eat at the end of the day. And Ghana is crying for food security, that everybody needs to be food secure. And by way of MOFA's definition, if you look at MOFA's definition, they are saying you should get the food at the right quantities and it must be affordable all the time. That means all the time when you need the food, you should be able to afford to buy the food. Uh, it should be qualitative and quantitative enough for you. But if you ask yourself this question, are we food secure as a nation? The answer is still no. Because all what the definition is talking about is still not practicable. Let me, let As me. we experience bad rules, 
lack of uh, transport, lack of storage facilities, lack of processing facilities, all these things come to affect the economic and the food security we are talking about as a nation. I don't know if the, um, it's okay to ask you this question, but you see, one thing that we always play politics with is the price of kinky. Oh, now kinky is one city. Oh, now kinky is 50%. So if you are saying that there's so much grain that we can't keep it, we can't buy it, and then on the flip side, we're saying, oh, grain is so expensive, so now kinky is one city. What, what, what's, what, who's creating that shortage so that they can buy the grain? Well, or making it expensive? You, first of all, have to look at the way you have been able to produce the maize that is used to uh, make the kinky. Uh, we are looking at uh, cost of production. For instance, in Ghana, if you are a farmer, you have to search for your own fertile land, create your own road to the farm, look for your own inputs to go to the farm, and come and compete with outsiders in your own local market. So at the end of the day, if you are not very powerful, you are going to be knocked out. As we speak, a lot of commercial farmers who are into agriculture 10 years back, a lot of them are no more because they cannot compete with outside uh, farmers. For instance, U.S. farmer, the Chinese farmer, the EU farmer. Where they can afford to dump their goods here, we don't have the capacity to do so. So at the end of the day, if you borrow money from the bank to do all this, you are going to be locked up. And so you better stop. And that is why I'm saying you still see the youth trooping to the cities to look for non-existing jobs. I remember when I was a kid during a champion's regime, mm -hmm. when he declared operation to feed yourself and made everything available to the farmer. The, the, the northerners were not used to the south because all that they needed was at, at home. My father did not need to travel from his community to even the district capital to get all his farm inputs. You have the agri officer who pays you a visit all the time, ask of your problem, send it back, and come back with solutions the, the next 24 hours, which is not so today. As we mentioned here, agri extension delivery is a hell in Ghana today. In certain instances, as research has shown, one uh, extension officer is seven 3,000 farmers. A very weak extension officer. An extension officer who is not even mobile, his motorbike is very weak and of late, even the quarters they give them to run these days is difficult to come by. At a time when we need to be serious in ensuring that every farmer, every extension officer gets to work to get all the technology transferred to the farmer to be able to produce to feed this nation, they are at one point. Ideally, extension officer, one should look after how many, ideally? Uh, one should look after uh, 1,500. That's the ideal? That is the ideal, 1,500. But how can you look after 1,500? Yeah, um, ideally it's 500. But mm -hmm. in our situation for now, as we have been talking with the MOFA uh, personnel, mm -hmm. say if, even if we are doing 1,500, it's okay. Provided we can give them the, 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 the motorbikes, give them the fuel to move, give them the needed allowances, petty petty maintenance allowances to keep them moving, they will be able to deliver their best. But as it is now, we are not doing our best. That is even why you are not seeing more agri training colleges being built by government. And that is why these days, uh, the, with the extension service, they, 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 they do replacement when somebody dies. When an officer dies, they do replacement, but they don't recruit extension officers today. So this is one of the factors that is hindering the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. And again, research have shown that in 10 years, if measures are not put in place to get them there, a chunk of them will go on retirement and extension delivery will come to naught. Is there any particular reason why uh, the extension officer side of things is not being encouraged? Maybe the farmers are not welcoming or you don't want their services. Why is that sector not being pushed? It's just like the teacher and the pupil. Extension delivery is for to the farmer. Day in, day out, we come out with new innovations. And how will the rural farmer get this innovation without the extension officer? And why are they there in the first place? Why are they there? 
they are there to provide extension service to the farmer. What is in terms of communication, in terms of how to come up with better yields, in terms of how to store your food against post harvest losses. These are some of the things they, they, they need to be doing. So if they are not there at the end of the day, what happened to you, the farmer, who is a lay person, just a peasant farmer, who is struggling to make, make ends meet? Adam, is it with, it, with, the, with the small scale farmers, have you grouped all together as one small scale, or you have pepper, uh, those who grow pepper together, those who do tomatoes together, those who do this tomato, so it will make easier buying, or it's all lumped up in one basket? Yeah, we, 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 we are into groups, and we are still struggling with the groupings. What is happening is that modern days, people need to buy in quantities, larger quantities. Mm -hmm. And so a buyer may want certain quantities where you need to uh, support a group to be able to uh, produce to meet the demand of the buyer. And so you'll be forced to put yourself into groups. Maize is the same thing. Rice is the same thing. Granules is the same thing. Cassava is the same thing. So you, you, do, you do have those groups? Yeah, we have those groups. And you... I mean, uh, one thing is that because things like pepper and stuff, I know uh, for export market is very, very strong. So if you have the group and indeed you have the quantity, you, you wouldn't have problems, would you? Yeah, that is what I'm, still, I'm saying. We are still struggling as a group. Okay. Uh, the name peasant. I remember just three weeks ago, we supported the GIZ uh, to celebrate Chili Pepe Day in Tamale. Because the idea is to promote uh, the production of chili pepper. Mm -hmm. Because you can export uh, chili pepper to other countries to get your foreign exchange. That is one of the ways the farmer's revenue can be uh, increased. And so it's one of the steps. And I know some other groups are into that. The JICA is also supporting uh, production of rice by way of new technologies that will increase your yields. And that will be good for consumption. Uh, by the general public. So the small, small groups are there. But we still need, we need to do more in terms of capacity and group dynamics to keep them all the time and so that when people are interested in their commodities, it's easy to get them produced for them. Yeah, I know someone who goes to Togo to get carrots. And I, sometimes I wonder, you know, uh, is there any particular reason why we can't grow carrots but she you know she insists that no you know it's better for her to go to togo to get the carrots is there any particular reason why we you know don't yes grow? uh different countries have ways of motivating their farmers to produce i was part of a delegation to mali and burkina faso on cotton uh, it's a crop that is grown in the north and I was surprised to see the former general, Amadou Tumano Touré, on his feet to welcome us. And so I was shocked. And what he said before sitting down was that the Malian economy is sitting on cotton. So when I see cotton producers, I can't sit down to welcome them. I have to be on my feet. So that is the way we need to look at things. I think um, in, on our part, we haven't received that kind of encouragement and support from our leaders. Uh, myself, as the president of the Peasant Farmers, I remember we planned meeting the president. I was in a cry like I've come, only to be told we should see the agri minister. The following day, when we were in the agri minister's office, somebody came to tell us, Oh, Ahmadinejad is in town, and the uh, agri minister's counterpart from Iran is there for them to sign bilateral cooperation. To whom? If the agri minister is signing bilateral cooperation, he's indirectly doing it on behalf of the farmers. So we could equally be, we, be, be given that attention or even participate in what they were doing in terms of promoting our culture between uh, the two countries. So it depends on where you are as a nation. I've been to a lot of the Francophone uh, countries, and the respect for farmers is too great when I compare it to that of Ghana. I'm going to take my second break, and then when I come back, 
how are we modernizing this industry, if any, to make sure that the young ones look forward to getting into small-scale farming? Stay tuned. Hello, so welcome back, and the discussion is oil for food, not quite literally, but oil, money, a bit of it towards subsistence farming or peasant farming, however you may term it. But it's Kwao, 1446, if you want us to bring the award, don't forget to send the text. But before we went on the break, I was asking, the how do we make this industry attractive so that your children and my children would want to go in because otherwise 30 years from today we will all sit at home or all rush to urban areas and import almost everything that we ate well, what are we doing to make it attractive uh yeah and uh, as you are seeing in 30 years if that is going to happen i can foresee that ghana will never will not be a sovereign state again because a nation that uh, is not capable of feeding its people uh, will lose grip of the people. And uh, the country would have been thrown into a very serious confusion, chaos, and anarchy if you cannot feed your people. Uh, you, being a landlord, uh, just made a mistake and uh, not being able to take care of your family for three or four days. And so you get complaints all over, and you cannot control the house again. So we don't hope to see that. That is why we are making this pleas at the, at the right time. Government should commit some oil revenue to support the agricultural sector. For us to move ahead and motivate others to be part of us, we need to translate all that we do on platforms into action. Uh, the politicians need to show the way by way of committing all what they see into practice. For instance, we have wonderful programs that are not working. For instance, the buffer stock, why is it not working? If these good intentions are there, why is it not working? We still have the AMSIC, the Akatia Mechanization Services Centers. The intention is that get tractors, all the needed equipment at a pool, at a, a certain location. Small-scale producers who cannot afford to buy them can render the services of these machines to do their work and give it to others to also continue. These are wonderful ideas that are not working. Let us make them work. We are producing... But why wouldn't that work? I mean, there's a tractor in an office or a pool, I need it for... On paper, this is what is supposed to be, this is what is happening. But on reality, at the ground level, it's not there. But is it pettiness or...? It's, it's, or... It's, I, I think that is what I'm seeing, lack of political will uh, to ensure that these things are at their designated points and they are working in the interest of the farmers just for our food security needs. These things are not working. I am yet to even come across some of the, the mechanization centers in the districts where I farm. I farm in the Den Yendi and Myung districts. I've never come across one. I'm yet to be shown one. And so farmers around these areas suffer to get tractor services. And as we speak, the value chain and agricultural enhancement program that it advanced with their findings, it has shown that if the northern region where I'm coming from they are in uh, a deficit of a tractor deficit of six thousand. If we are going to do proper land preparation at the right time, we need additional six thousand tractors. I'm not talking of countrywide, so you can imagine countrywide the the, the percentage. Six thousand. Six thousand. Now, as we are speaking, we have farmers running helter skelter, looking for combine harvesters to harvest their rice that we will eat very soon. It's difficult to get them. Now, even the, 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 the fewer that is there, maintenance is a problem. Where do you get the pass? You have to go to China and other areas. And as I speak, you can still locate combined harvesters left in the bush unattended to because they don't have access to the pass. And so as a nation, if we are bringing in agricultural equipments, 
the backups are very important. For instance, the Japanese intervention, where some of us benefited in getting the machines. A chunk of the machines are packed because you don't have the backup. You cannot get it to buy. So this is another serious area that we, 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 we need to be looking into. And so as a nation, if I'm given the opportunity to av advise the president as we speak now, I'm going to tell him only two things. Support and protect the agricultural sector. Revamp the research institutions. Give them all the needed support to research into areas where we can go in and make the findings available so that farmers can take advantage of that by way of the, the, our food security needs. Now, the other area is marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing, ask you about agri -business, marketing so. is a big problem. For instance, I'm a rice producer, and a whole lot of my friends are into rice production. But who is the official meal sponsor of the Black Stars of Ghana? The rice master. Mm -hmm. Who gets his rice from China and other areas? He's very powerful, and 10 of my type cannot knock him out of the market. One, where he's buying it from is heavily subsidized. The EU and China and other areas, Thailand, heavily subsidize their farmers so they can afford to dump their rice here. But here, I have to do all that I need to do to get the rice to the market in terms of land acquisition, in terms of the equipment, in terms of the seed we are talking about. As an individual farmer, no support from elsewhere. Can you compete with your counterparts in the US, EU, and China? No. And so that is why we are saying government come out and support the agricultural sector. If you are interested in employing the youth, these are the areas you need to support. Like I mentioned to you during a Jampon regime, you didn't see the exodus of youth from the north trooping to the south. No. They had better jobs doing. They were dignified in going to the farm. Today, go back to the north. If you are going to the farm, your children will not follow you there because they have seen the frustration you are going through in terms of the land acquisition, in terms of your competition in your own local market with, with rice from China and other areas. Mm -hmm. So government needs to sit up to protect and support the agricultural sector. We have in our hands the impending economic partnership agreement. If we, we go into signing this agreement, what it meant is that the farmers in the EU will not open our doors and dump their goods in our market with zero tariffs. And you don't have that equal capacity to do so. What happened? You'll be forced to go to the streets to do other things. That is why the cities are choked today. You see, just like we've done to cocoa, where, you know, you have a cocoa marketing board and, you know, cocoa is also done through subsistence farming. I mean, there's nobody who has hundreds and hundreds and acres of cocoa farm, but somehow we've managed to produce number two or number one in the world, depending on good rainfall. Is there any other commodity which the peasant farmers are coming up with, looks like, maybe with rice or maybe with tubers or something? set up a board so that we can supply the world with that product too? We have a lot of opportunities, but those opportunities are left untapped. I remember during the farming season, there was an issue of smuggling of fertilizers, and one of my younger brothers, who happens to be a deputy information minister, when he was interacting with the press, he said, these fertilizers are going to be sent to poor farmers up north, and I laughed. Because farmers in the north are not very poor. It's just that they are not being given the needed equipments and the needed support to work. I remember one of the very prominent areas in Tamale was named after rice farmers. It was called the Rice City. Gumani today, uh, the youth of today is not aware that Gumani in Tamale is known as the rice city. It was named after rice farmers. Today, there are no more, and the name of the area is being changed, so people don't know. All, the, all what the farmers are saying, give us the equipment to go and work. We are not crying for single spine. We are not crying for affordable housing. Give us the needed equipment, build the roads, give us the storage facilities, the processes, 
so that we can feed this nation. That is all what we are crying for. We have kept faith with people of this country since Adam. We have never gone on strike. We have never given any condition, no ultimatum. All that we demand is support and protection of the agricultural sector. And that is all. Num Numbers-wise, how many of you? Numbers-wise, we have had 60-65% of the population is engaged in agriculture. How, within the association, how many members? We are 37,000 members countrywide. Growing or growing, staying? growing, growing, growing very, very fast. And I, uh, if you share our vision of making this country food secure, and you are not a farmer, you can be part of it because we share our vision. You can easily become a member. If this oil plan fail, what is plan B for the peasant farmer? We don't hope this plan will fail. It will never. It will not fail. If this plan fail, it means. Our school feeding program is going to fail. Our quest for food security will fail. All the good, good intentions we are talking about, agriculture, the comprehensive African agriculture development program, all these things will fail and will not achieve our MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. And that is what uh, things will look like if this plan fails. Is the uh, problem nationwide or is it prevalent in certain Regions, or is it nationwide, this? nationwide. Who in Ghana doesn't eat? And where in Ghana will you go and you will not see farmers? They are all over. Sacrificing to sleep, battle with snakes, scorpions to feed this nation. Uh, we, we don't care where we sleep. We don't care what we do to feed this nation. But up to date, we still hear people struggling to say that... Uh, Snake bites treatment should be free. It happens to a chunk of farmers without anybody's support. And so if these kind of people are sacrificing to feed this nation, why can't we give them the... Where has our apathy come from? The apathy you know, towards the uh, farmer, that I don't care behavior. Where, has it, where did we get it from? I'm, I'm, I'm yet uh, struggling to know where it's coming from. Because, because as, soon as, as soon as you go to parliament, even if you go to the president now, he will tell you he's a farmer. Mm. And I'm very happy. A lot of the old parliamentarians, we, we, are, we are battling with them in the bush. And some of them are telling us that if they had known what we were doing would have helped them outside parliament, they would have taken up the, the, the lead in fighting for better policies and programs because they have come back to the land. Likewise, the crop of parliamentarians who are in parliament Quickly, and their farmers, if they fail to support these things we are pushing forward, they will soon come out to join us. We got uh, just one minute to go and uh, two big questions. I don't know how you're going to answer them, but as soon as they give you the money, the Western region is going to say, hey, we are in the West, so we also want some part of the oil money. And two, how is it going to generate, you know, uh, yields from agri because we've already put money there and nothing has come out so what is going to be done differently now and how do we stop western region from also coming for some part of the money uh, me i'm a farmer so i can't talk about western region but what i know is that food comes from other parts of the country to the western so they, region so they also get they have the right to demand for a share of the 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 oil revenue likewise we are doing mm -hmm. we are saying we want to feed this nation maybe they also want to develop the area for more investors to come in. And then in terms of yields, because so far money that's got in hasn't come out. So which, how do we get it now so that we make sure that we get yields from it? No, because we, are, we are seeing our capacities needs to be built in terms of new technologies so that we can improve our, our, our yields by way of getting better seed. If we are able to get better seed, we can increase the yields so that we can pay for our loans. The bank credit must be farmer friendly, not as it is now. If the bank credit is farmer friendly, a lot of farmers will go in. They Mohammed. can pay because of higher yields and have something to go home. Mohammed Adam Nasiru, president of the uh, Peasant Farmers Association. Uh, my brother, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we hope that uh, your plea has fallen on soft ears and warm hearts and that they would heed to it. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, personality profile. We're talking to Dr. Jacob Eshon, uh, who is 
the founder of the planetarium, the only one in uh, West Africa. who we'll tune in 9 o'clock the same time while we come back and, as I say, to do it all over again. Good evening and thanks for watching.